am i am i audible everyone We'll be taking one example today and we'll understand how does a MapReduce work. Until yesterday, we completed the architecture of MapReduce. Now, all the concepts of MapReduce we'll be learning by taking one more examples. Okay. So, the first example that we are going to take to understand MapReduce is a standard word count program, which I think some of you are already aware that uh, you know we we use it as a hello world kind of program for MapReduce. <clears throat> okay, and most of the people they start with Hadoop, uh, you know, word count only for learning MapReduce. But what I will be explaining you is not just how word count pro program can be written, but I will also explain you how that problem will be processed internally at every phase of MapReduce, how the data is divided into every phase of MapReduce and what logic we should write in both the phases. So first, before jumping into the programming, we, I will take some sample data and explain you what would happen internally at every phase. If you understand and visualize that way, then it becomes very easy for you to you know, start programming and probably start visualizing. When we write programs, you will also visualize it easily that, okay, this is what is going to happen, okay? So let's take an example of word count where I have a file with full of, let's say, words separated by a comma. So as you can see here, this is my sample file which I wanted to process. I've just taken some 15 lines as a sample file. There could be 1 billion lines also. What you need to do is you need to basically find out how many times a word orange comes, how many times a word apple comes. Basically unique word in this file and the count of occurrences of that word is what we are kind of looking for as a problem statement. So is everyone clear with problem statement? Any doubts on problem statement? So basically it will be something like this. If I if I see this file, I want to, uh, you know, count all the currencies of banana. How many times banana word comes in this file? Similarly, all the, how many times orange word comes, how many times mango word comes. All these are occurrences of the particular word. So you need to tell me the total count of and all the unique words in this file. Okay, so any doubts on the problem statement? All right, so now this is the file that I want to process, okay? Now the file has to be in SDFS if you want to leverage MapReduce processing. Because then only, the see, if the file is in SDFS, what happens? Your data within the file will be divided further into the SDFS blocks and different data nodes. So it is better that, you know, uh, uh, I mean, you store the file in SDFS so that it will be divided into blocks. Now, once the data is divided into blocks, when you want to write any MapReduce program to process that file, it becomes much more efficient because you have more, more blocks available for that file. So you can parallelly process it. 
Now here within this file, let's say I am storing this file in HDFS. So can we visualize something like this, that this is block one, this is block two, this is block three. Assume our file is so big so that at least three blocks are created when you store in the HDFS and each block contains this much lines of records. Okay, so can we visualize that these blocks are stored in data task tracker 1, 2 and 3 respectively and assume that we have written a MapReduce program and when we submit a jar to the job tracker for this, the job tracker will basically start three map tasks and launch it to three different blocks because it knows that number of blocks is equal to number of map tasks. It is going to give these three map tasks to the, each block respectively. Okay, so can everyone, uh, so basically see three map tasks are assigned to these three blocks running in three task tracker machines. So is it fine with this everyone? Any doubts on this part? All right, so since we understood this way, right, so the file is divided into three blocks and they are stored in three machines and each map task is assigned to these three blocks to process the data, okay? Now here we need to understand this that, see, each map task is going to process all the records in this block parallelly. Map one will process all these five records, map two will process these four records and so on and so forth. So if you understand how one of the map tasks process all the block data, we should be able to understand the similar logic for other uh, tasks as well. Okay, so let us uh, understand how map one will process all the records in the block B1, okay? So what I have done is I have written one pseudo code just to explain you what is the uh, you know template code we should write in our MapReduce program as well as what Hadoop has written internally so that it helps us to process this data in an efficient manner. Okay. So we'll understand how map one will process all the blocks. And as I said, there is a word count uh, execution program. So this is my, let's say a template code, which I have written. So as you can see, I have to write any Java program, which you write, have to write it in the class. And under that, I have three different components, a mapper component, reducer, and a driver. So mapper is the one which you are writing it as a separate class. Driver, reducer also is a separate class and driver is just a main method in Java program under which you need to configure some important properties. Okay, so in the mapper class, what you are doing, you are extending it from the mapper from the Hadoop framework. So you are also overriding map function and remember one thing, there is a thumb rule that every data flows in a map reduce in the form of keys and values. Okay, I'll repeat, every data will flow in the map reduce in the form of keys and values. What does that mean? That means whenever you are into map phase, 
there is a map method which will be called for every record in that block okay so here for example the map function is going to process every record one by one right so if there are five records five times map function will get called if there are 500 records 500 times map method will get called okay so here basically and every map, map function is expecting key value as an input parameter and it will also write key and value as an output parameter why does it always need uh, or expect us uh, expect uh, you know framework to give the data in the form of keys and values that is something that we'll see after some time okay so that's a mapper code similarly a reduce code reduce method also will expect key value and then write output as key value and then you have a driver code so this is something which you need to write as a developer okay i'll also show you uh, there are some piece of code which you need to write it as a as a you don't need to write it by the way it is actually available as part of Hadoop framework itself so I will now explain you that what Hadoop framework would have done if this scenario would have happened that means if three map tasks were assigned what would it do to create three map tasks and how does it execute it so this is a pseudo code it is just to give you an idea about what happens inside this file when something fails okay so let us understand this portion see there are three map tasks right so what Hadoop would have done internally is it will create three instance of mapper class as you can see what is this my mapper it's the same my mapper class which you have written okay so it will create an instance of this my mapper three times because there are three blocks at different machines right along with that now this is what it does for every record in a block b1 so i'm just taking an example of how map1 would process block1 data because same thing you can replicate it for others as well okay so for every record in a block b1 what it has to do just remember just see here this is the record which comes right it has to read that record and now if you go back to your execution it has to call map function which expects key and value as an input parameter so then see this is just one line one string how do i convert that into key and value so that will be something which is uh, 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 you know which is something that Hadoop framework will decide so what it does it says for every record in block b1 he's going to read the entire record in this fashion and then he's going to convert some portion of that record as a key and some portion as a value now you may be confused to know that this is what is this why this number is here and all that so let us understand let us spend a few minutes on understanding that so basically see every file will contain some records okay but whenever you restore any record in the file internally file object will always point a byte offset as a key it will it will actually store something called byte offset which is nothing but it's a address for the starting character of the first or every record so let's say for first line zero is the address for the next line how does it calculate one two three four all the characters plus new line let's say it is 50 so 50 becomes address for the new line then it could be 200 200 will be the address for the third line likewise there are so many numbers which are already being generated 
to store some portion of the data you don't actually uh, uh, i mean basically see all these uh, byte of index numbers to track the static position of every record in that file are internally maintained by file it is not a hadoop concept it is available with any file object hadoop just utilizes this when you read it okay okay so there will be a byte offset available for every line in that file okay now here this is an important stuff see it says i am reading this entire line this is a byte offset so normally byte offset will be very huge number for to it's an index for this record then the entire record so this is how till the new line this is how the entire record will be read by the hadoop framework now how does hadoop framework know that i have to read the entire record till this point only it see it may be possible that it it, it may consider this much portion as one record as you as you can see i am highlighting half of first full line sorry its entire line plus half of next line it could be taken that as one record but why it has not taken that when why it has always considered slash n as a new a new line character till that point only it has uh, you know contained this information because hadoop framework uses one very important class internally to divide your data into key value also it will the same class will help you to read this line from the file and uh, read it in such a way that so that it will be converted into appropriate keys and values what is that class or what is that api that hadoop framework uses internally it is called input format classes okay so till now see we have seen that it's all basically uh, okay so here if you can see i have one one entire record now hadoop framework has written some by default input format classes which are available as part of hadoop jar which know how to process a text file how to process a binary file and all that so if it is a text file right this is a text file i don't really need to worry about dividing that record into key value or reading the line from the file that entire headache of reading every record from the file is taken care by hadoop framework itself but we just need to tell hadoop framework that which is the input format class you should use because we know as a developer when we are writing a mapreduce program we know that what is the data that we are going to process so that's why when you are trying to submit uh, my produce programs uh, okay yeah so the input format classes will help you to read the entire record from the file and convert it into keys and values so as you can see here i have to tell what is the input format class that you want hadoop to use for processing input data and converting every record into key and value okay so that is something that we have to just decide see we know our input input file right so we will say that yeah this is a text file so we will just set a right appropriate input format class from the hadoop library and we will tell that in driver class that this is the input format you should use once you just tell that to hadoop framework when you write a appropriate input format class in the driver method and when you execute this program hadoop framework will first pick up this point and it says okay he wants us to use a text input format class which know which knows how to convert data into you know uh, keys and values so basically what happens is this particular input format class if you open it is very very complex code so it has a, a um yeah 
So it will basically know how to divide the entire record into key and values. So it's something like this. See, I am reading this record, okay, in this fashion. Now, how, how do I divide this record into key and value? Like which portion should I take it as key? Which portion should I take it as value? Even that logic is already available in input format. There is a class called record reader, which is part of input format. That class will do the job of reading the entire record and converting into input uh, different different input files. Okay, or or basically converting into basically a input key and input value. So see, there is a pseudo code that we have written just to explain you that for every record in block B1, which is this, for every record in block B1. I am going to read that record and then I'm going to convert that record into the key and value where key will be a byte offset that I will take and the value will be the entire record till new line character. That is what is happening here. See, if you take this example, it is reading this entire record in this fashion where it is also reading the internal byte offset which are generated to maintain the data. Okay. Now, once it divides your data into the keys and values, that means key is a byte offset and value is the entire record. When you have, when Hadoop framework or Hadoop input format classes are uh, have done this job, then it calls a map function and pass this respective key value as an input parameter to the map function which you have written as a developer. Okay. It also expects third parameter is a context. Let's not worry about it right now. But these are this is the parameters which are being passed to the map function. And here, whatever logic you have written will be executed on top of this data, and it will generate an intermediate output from the mapper file. Okay, so that is what has happened here. So that is why I have written this pseudo code. Same way you can visualize that this code is running at a map two and map three level also. Okay, uh, so yeah, we have just understood that how every record in the block will be processed, converted into key value, and then it will call map function, pass this key and value as an input argument, and then the logic that you have written in your map function will get executed on top of this key and value. Now, at the end, you have to also write the output key value from the mapper. So all these things will happen behind the scenes to generate an output from the mapper class. Iliraja, you need to, so images is like a binary file, so it has a sequence file input format class which handles that, but if you are supplying, let's say, uh, Excel or, uh, you know, I would say, uh, uh, XML kind of data, then it doesn't have inbuilt support, there is a separate code you need to write for that. So is everyone clear as of now? Any any confusion anybody has? Or are we good till the mapper processing? So did we understand this pseudo code and all that?
All right, so let's move forward. <coughs> so basically, till now we understood that how you know your uh, each record in a block will be processed by Hadoop framework. It will convert each record into input key value, and it will call map function on top of that. This is what we have understood, right? For every record, this is what happens. And how does it read a record based on the input format class, which is a, which you need to supply in a driver code. If there is a file, let's say XML file or any other file where Hadoop does not have support to read that file, Hadoop does not have inbuilt input format classes to read that record and convert it into key value. In that case, what you need to do, you need to write your own custom input format class. Okay, and then Hadoop will start supporting that. Now tell me one thing, see here we have already understood that every record will be converted into key value pair. So can we assume that this entire record, entire all the five records in block B1 could be could have been converted in this fashion, key and value, keys, byte offset values, entire record, right? And every key value pair will would have been submitted for map function. So if there are four records, four times map function would have been called, right? So we understood this portion. Now let us understand what is the logic that you need to write in the uh, uh, map function. So these dotted lines which I have given is the is the place where you need to write a logic here. Okay. So let us understand that portion. So for example, see the first key value pair, key zero and value is the entire record. I need to write some logic so that it will give me the count of every all the unique words in the line. So the problem still remains the same. You have to solve that by taking this particular record at a time. So what should be the logic you can write? So it's a simple Java programming. So I have one string which is having words which are separated by comma. See, I don't need to use a byte offset which is a key, right? I'm If I just use a value which is more than enough for me to solve this problem. So I'll be splitting all the words which are separated by comma and I will generate one array. Okay, so so what happens is this record would be converted into array. I'll split this line with, uh, you know, comma as a delimiter, so it will extract all the words and put it into array in this fashion. Right? So now once we have an array, you need to iterate through this array one by one, and then as in when you're iterating through every word in this array, you are writing the output as out, output key as word and the output value as one. Basically word and the occurrence of that word. Next word is let's say apple. So I'll just write apple comma one mango comma one Again if banana comes I'll say banana comma one orange comes I'll say orange comma one Okay, so basically you are iterating through every word in an array and you are converting it into the output key and value which is word and the occurrence of that word which is one. Now the only point to notice is next time when I'm hitting this particular word which is orange in the same array, instead of writing orange comma two, I'm writing orange comma one. 
So I'm not even calculating or remembering previous words because as in when the word comes, I'm just writing that as an intermediate output, right? Remember in the map radius what happens? If these are the two files and map one is assigned here, it will process this block V1 and write the intermediate output here. Map one, map two will process block V2 and write intermediate output in the local file system of that machine. So this is the file where you are writing all this output data. Okay, so as in when the data comes, I'm just writing it into the intermediate output data. Okay, so see, first line will be converted into this version. Now you may have a question that why orange comma, we are not writing orange comma two and we are writing orange comma one. So as I said, every mapper will process one record and then write the output into output one, output intermediate output file generated in local file system of these two machines. Now already if you write something into the output file, then you don't really need to read it back and then increment the counter. That's why I'm just, if I, the next time also the same word comes, I'm writing it in orange comma one. And there is a significant, uh, in, there is a reason why also we, need, we write it in this fashion because I'll, I'll tell you later, you can leverage a framework itself to count all this. <coughs> you don't need to write a logic to count all the values of the same key. Now if the next line comes, what it does, again it would have divided it into the array, like lychee, banana, mango, orange, like that. And then it will write the words like this. Okay, so basically all the words of the same block will be converted into word comma one and they are written into the intermediate output file generated by that map task, okay? So now all these lines assume would have been processed and they would have added a lot of data like this. So that is that is definitely, you know, uh, uh, one approach where you are processing all the lines, converting into key value, key will be the word and the value will be the, you know, total count. So if that is the case, then same thing would have happened for other map also. So can we visualize that this kind of output are generated by map one, map two, and map three, correct? Since we have three map tasks. So it would be something like this, right? Can we just visualize this portion, which is what I have shown here is, This is the output of map one, this is the output of map two, this is the output of map three, okay? Just for the space constraint, I have written only few lines here, just to give you an idea. So this is the output file generated by map task one, this is the output file generated by map task two parallelly in the different machine, and this is the output three file generated by map three in the different machine, right? And every output file you are containing a word and occurrence of that word. It might happen that so many times, let's say if you take orange, orange comma one comes uh, so many times in this file. So wherever orange comma one comes, it's fine. It will basically try to combine them later. So let us, let us uh, 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 understand that these are the outputs which are generated by map task. And then we need to combine this output, intermediate output into a shuffle and sort phase. So we'll see what happens in shuffle and sort. But are we all clear in the map phase? This is map phase, map phase is completed. Is everyone clear, any doubts?
Uh, Mary, I have. I was just waiting for people to just give the response that they are fine. Okay. So I was not speaking, by the way. That's why you couldn't hear me. Are you able to hear me now? Okay. Great. So okay, fine. Since everyone is fine, let's move forward. So this is how the output is generated by mapper task, okay? So this is the output generated by map one, map two, and map three. So now I'll take an example of orange comma one. Now what happens, you are in shuffle and sort. After map phase, shuffle and sort happens where you are trying to combine all the intermediate output data from different map tasks. So this output will be sent over a network to the shuffle and sort phase where it will combine the data from all these mappers output, which means all the values of the same key are grouped together. So it will be something like this. When you say combine, it is not appending the output. It is actually intelligently combining this way. That That is why See, this is the main reason why your data will always be converted into key value when you write programs in MapReduce because of the shuffle and sort phase. So when you want to combine it, you can easily combine all the values of the same key. So even if there are three orange comma one comes from mapper one, two from mapper two, three, two from mapper three, you can just say all one, 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 like seven times one comes for the orange, right? So that is the important process which combines all the values of the same key. Now another reason to divide your data into the key value because when you want to do this kind of combination, it is if you have done your if you have stored your data in the form of key values, then you could have used map kind of data structure to basically solve it in a much more efficient way. Okay. So likewise, you can now visualize that all apples, all cherries, everything is combined like that. The reason why it is divided into key value is just for this combination, so that all the values of the same key will be grouped like this in an efficient manner. See, if you know hash map kind of data structure, it will store data in the form of keys and values. So if you see the implementation of this hash map, you will know that it will basically, uh, you know, uh, Obviously, it does follow this bucketing algorithm and all, but then it is guaranteeing you that the order time taking uh, time that it takes to read the data from a hash map and write it into hash map will be always constant. So time complexity will be order of one always. When you want to read and write data from such kind of key value pair. So that is why since uh, in shuffle and sort also we'll be reading too many key values, key values, and then we are trying to combine them. So there is definitely some effort that is needed. And that's why if I choose it to be key value, it becomes very fast for me to combine all the values of the same key in order of one time frame. That is why there is also another reason why all the data will be always converted into key value so that in shuffle and sort, you can easily combine it in an efficient manner. So this is how your data will be combined in shuffle and sort phase. After that, what happens? This data will be given to the reducer as an input. Okay. So if you see here, Now, in shuffle and sort, see this kind of data will be grouped. So you have key and a list of ones. So every key and a list of value pair will be given as an input to reducer method. Reducer method will wait for key and a list of value as an input parameter. So every key and list of value will be given as an input parameter to reducer. So if there are 10 list key value pair, then, that, then it will reduce method will get called 10 times on shuffle and sort data, okay? 
now it's very simple you get this assume you get this particular record first time as an input to the reducer then in reducer what logic you should write or you get all the ones so you just need to write a logic to sum all the ones and whatever sum which is being generated that is what you need to write it as a final output along with the word which is orange which is the same key that way if you see all the other records will also be processed and it would generate this uh, output in this fashion so every word and the total count of that word will, would have, has been present in the file in the output file in the HD, uh, final output path which you have given that is how you process the entire word count problem so, so i have just explained you what has happened in every internal stage stage Hello, can you hear me? Am I audible everyone? Am I audible everyone? Uh, am I audible everyone? Hello? Yeah, I think unfortunately it just kicked me out of the Webex for some time. Okay, 
uh, yeah, anyway, so we have basically completed understanding how a MapReduce would have processed the data in every phase of map and reduce to solve this word count problem. So are we all clear with that? Did we understand this entire flow? Any doubts on this? No, Nikhil, you don't need to write shuffle and sort. That is internal to Hadoop framework. We just need to write mapper and reducer. No, no, Mano, I will be writing now entire program. Don't worry. I'll be writing the entire program and I'll show you how to execute it also. I have just given you the first the idea behind that. So that you will get an understanding about how it will work internally. So we'll see that, Shantanu. We'll see that. That is a programming part that we need to handle, okay? So by the way, I have not yet started writing a MapReduce program. I'll do it. I have just given you this flow just to help you understand this is what would happen at every phase of map and reduce. Okay, so shall we go ahead and write a MapReduce program? All right, let me just open an Eclipse. So as you can see, this is a Cloudera, uh, you know, VM that we have uh, installed. There is an Eclipse available in the desktop. You need to just use it. So I'm just, uh, you know, opening the Eclipse. So it's uh, opening up the Eclipse. Uh, Eclipse is the editor, by the way, where we write Java programs. So people who are not familiar with that, uh, just wanted to inform you that it's a Java editor, basically, okay, where you write all the Java programs. And MapReduce programs also, we are going to write it using Eclipse.
Okay. So can you see the screen, uh, Mary? Yes, Michele, it's possible. I mean, you can choose any Java editor. There is no uh, limitations to the Java editor. I'm using Eclipse. You can use uh, NetBeans also. That's fine. So I'll be first creating a Java project, okay? Uh, so let us create a Java project first. Let's say I'll write it, the project name itself as MapReduce. As you can see, this is a normal simple Java program which is created. Not exactly Java program, but it's a Java project which is created, which will already have a source folder and certain Java libraries. By default, it will come. So you need to write your programs inside this source package. So you need to start writing your Java program in a class. So let me create a new class. Okay, always Java program have to be written in a class. So I'll just say WC job, WC job, word count job is what I'm going to write. And I will specify some packages, com. So as you can see, you got a template code of this class already written. This is the class where you need to start writing your program. So let us start writing the program here, which is, I will have to write, in a, for a map reduce, I have to write a couple of stuff here, which is, what is a mapper class, what is a reducer class, and so on and so forth. So we'll just say mapper. Reducer driver. Okay. In the mapper class, what you have to do? You see, uh, there are some concepts like inner classes in Java, which I'm going to use to write mapper class. Basically, inner class means class within the class. So if you don't understand this concept, don't worry right now. They are all Java specific concepts, but you need to just follow the concept what I'm doing here, okay? If you do that, it is more than enough. All right, so don't worry about the syntax right now. So people who know Java can easily understand the syntax. Okay, so I will be writing one mapper class. I'm giving the name of that class as WC mapper, which is extending from the mapper class provided by Hadoop framework, which is a base class in the Hadoop framework, okay? Now, as you can see, Eclipse says, gives some error. It says, I don't recognize what mapper class you're talking about. Why Eclipse does not recognize? Because, see, this class is written in Hadoop library, and in our Java project, right, which we have created, if you come back here and see, we got only certain Java libraries by default. So third-party libraries for any software like Hadoop is not imported by default. That's why all the packages, all the classes inside this library, if you want to use, you can't use it unless you import it. So let us go ahead and import that Hadoop libraries in the MapReduce project which we have created. So I'll right-click on the project and then go to the build path Click on the configure build path. I'll go to the libraries. Then I'll say add external jars. I have to follow a path in a file system where libraries are available under user lib Hadoop. If you remember, this is the location we went yesterday. 
when we did which Hadoop. So this is the location where all the Hadoop jars are available. So you just need to import Hadoop common and Hadoop core jars. Okay, once you import that, just say okay. So that means your Hadoop libraries are imported as a reference library, third party libraries. Now, if I go at the end of my class and type control space, it would basically be able to recognize what is the mapper class you are talking about. Uh, hello, am I audible? Am I audible, everyone? Hey, guys, can you see my screen? Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, I just uh, couldn't. Uh, ref my chat window was not getting refreshed, so I couldn't see your response earlier. Uh, no problem. Yeah, so thanks for responding. So let me continue. So what I'm writing here is just for your understanding purpose, I'm defining that the, my key is a byte offset value is the entire record, okay? And my output key is the orange banana apple and the value is one. So this is the kind of data which will be coming to my mapper class and I will write it as an output also. So what is the data type you should use for them? That is what it is asking for. So see, in byte offset will can be any huge number, right? It could be, let's say, any long number. So basically, that's why it is always safe to take a long data type, long writable. Long writable is a data type provided by Hadoop framework, which which is a data type to hold all the long values, okay? Similarly, all the characters that you want to store, all the string objects, you can store it in the object called Text. text is another data type provided by Hadoop framework to hold all the characters. 
Similarly, output key is orange, which is also text. Okay. And output value is one, which is basically intractable. All right, so what I have done is I have just specified the right please and right values. I mean, right uh, data type for choosing the input key value and output key value. That's it. So we completed the structure of mapper class, okay? Now let us start writing a mapper code. So since I am going to write output key type as text and output value type is intitable, so I have to first create those objects. I'll write output key. I have created two empty objects of output key value and then I'm overriding a map function which takes key, input key as a long writable value, input value, and the third parameter is context. Okay, so here this is the method where we have to start writing the logic. So what is the logic we should write? So assume that you get this kind of records, then you need to just split the records into different words and Basically, you need to split every record by uh, into the array of words which are separated by comma. So in Java, you can do it in just one line of code. You will just say value dot to string dot split. Okay. I'll get array of words. Cool. So I get all the array of words where I'm basically splitting that words by comma. Now once you get all array of words, what you need to do? You need to iterate through those words. So you will be, you will be saying for Every word in a words array, you will actually set the key as as word. Okay, what I'm doing, I have got this spray array, I'm so, sorry, I have got this record, I'm splitting them based on the comma, and I'm creating an array of words, right? And then I'm iterating through those words, and as in when I encounter a word from this array, I'll set that as an output key, and then I'll set one as an output value. And then I'll use this context object. Okay, uh, so context method, uh, context objects use is 
it will have it will just it's like you know it will help you to write the output key value into the intermediate output file generated by map function so it you just need to set right keys and values that you want it to be written into the file system that's it context object will internally go figure it out which file it has to you know write it and then save it and everything so that is a beautiful wrapper, wrapper object that is given to us Okay, so this completes my entire mapper code which I need to write to process this word count problem. So is everyone clear with this mapper code? Any doubts on this class, on the mapper class? All right, so we can actually get going with the reducer code. So let us start writing a reducer program. Since you understood mapper, the reducer will be also on the similar lines. It has to extend the reducer code of Hadoop framework, which also have to, which also expects like what is the input key value type of the uh, data. Reduce some input key and value. So you'll get something like this.
okay so if this is the input key which is orange you need to take it as a text the input value is 1 which is in try table what is the output key output key will be just the same orange value will be the total sum right that is what you are writing it here text and writable is that clear everyone so this is how you basically define key value for reducer now reducer also let us write the logic Reducer will expect key as text. It also expects list of value, right? So the list is basically being presented as iterable object in Java. Okay, this is how a list looks like, iterable. Now what you need to do, you need to take sum equals zero. So you need to, it's just like this, there are a list of ones which are coming, you need to just iterate through this list of, you know, values. What does this mean by the way, iterable, intritable? Iterable represents list and intritable means it, it are, they are list of integers, that's it, okay? So you, you need to iterate through this list and take the sum. So this is how you do it in Java, for every value object, I'll just say sum is equals to sum plus value dot get and finally I have to set the sum into the output value So what I'm doing in reducer, I get key and the list of values. List of ones, I'm adding it as one sum. Setting that sum as output value and that's what I'm writing it as an output key value. So key will be the same key which I'm getting it as an input. Value will be the total sum. That's it. So this is my reducer code. Is that clear with everyone, the reducer code? Any doubts? All right, so we completed mapper and reducer. Now let us start writing a driver code, okay? So there is no need of writing shuffle and sort. We just need to write mapper and reducer and the driver code. So driver code will need, doesn't need any logic. It will just need some configuration object, uh, configuration settings to be set. At.
so i'm creating one job object okay in the driver code this is your job client if you understand remember from yesterday's session yesterday's architecture session you will have to create one job client who will know basically like who will basically do the job submission to the job tracker so that job client that job object you need to set certain properties like what is your mapper class what is the main class main class in the sense this class where we are writing all the map reduce programs basically a class which has a main method simple then we'll set mapper class Okay, we'll also set what is the reducer class. Okay. Now, after setting up the reducer class, you need to also set the output key type of a mapper. Map output key type. Map output will be orange, a word, right? Which is a text. And map output value type will be NTR, which is orange comma one is what you are writing, right? So that is the data type. So as you can see from up, up, every mapper class will write text and in table as an output key value. So that is the type we need to declare it here. Similarly, we need to also declare what is an output key value type of a reducer. We'll just say output key type, output value type of a reducer. Yes, Raj. Okay, now output key type is also defined. Now see here, as we discussed, we need to tell Hadoop that what is the input format class it should use to process this data. So we are telling him that use file input format because we know that our input data is a, there are two file input format class, you need to choose this particular input format from this package. So you are just saying that Add input path. You know that your input data is a word, so it will be basically a, a text data. So that's why you are taking that file input format as an input format plus to read the file. Now, what is the input path of the file? You need to supply somewhere the, which input file you want to process, right? So this is the argument, argument of zero. See, in Java, there is something called command line argument. So when you're executing a program, you can also pass certain parameters to that program. So that is my first parameter will be input path of the file, which is stored in SDFS, which I want you to process during this program, right? And I'm saying that use file input format to read that file. That means it's a text file. Similarly, you can use file output format also. Yeah, file output format, you just say dot set, output path, a job. Again, you will just say, New path halves of one. So the next argument is an output path which you are giving. So that's where it is going to store the entire output of your MapReduce program. And finally, you will just say 
system dot exit log dot wait for completion true zero and so on. Okay, so job dot wait for completion. See, once you create entire job with all the settings, uh, you are basically just saying job dot wait for completion. That means job dot submit to the job tracker. In internally, it will be submitting it to the job tracker only. Now here, the main thread which have to wait because all the map and reduce task till it completes, it will not execute. That's why it is wait for completion. But you just remember that this method will finally submit your job to Hadoop cluster. Right uh, through this uh, uh, object. So, yeah, okay, uh, sure, we shall I'll explain. So, file input format is basically a input format class written by Hadoop Framework. So, we are just saying that I'm going to supply you in one input file that could be processed with uh, file input format class uh, or, or uh, you know, basically, you are just telling that this is the input file I have and it's a text data, so use this input format class. So that it will read every record and convert it into key value and supply to map function. Similarly, when you are writing an output, you have to give the path where it should write an output. You are just telling use this uh, output format which writes into the text kind of data. So, are you clear now? This completes my driver cl class. Vishal, are you clear with your question? Okay. So this is a driver class. So we have completed all the. all mapper reducer and driver programs for our map reduce. So are we all clear? Is anyone has any questions? Yes, Ilaraja, that is possible, but you have to write your own custom input format for that. Any further questions? Sure, Nitin, no problem. So as long as you're understanding the overall concepts, we are good. Because I know that being non-Java person, it would be a little difficult to understand at the first shot all these syntaxes, right? So that is fine. That Anyway, I'll share all this code with you so that you can take it as a reference also later on. Now, this is a reducer, Mary.
So Manu, all we will be writing so many MapReduce program in the classes itself. So I'll be sending you all these files. Once the class completes, I'll be sending you these files. As in when we complete these uh, programs, okay? All right, so let me start executing this, okay? We have created a MapReduce, let's start executing it. So you need to right click on the project and click on export. You have to first create a jar. So there are certain options, go to this Java and there is a jar file. You click on next, then it will ask you to give the file name, jar file name. So I'll just say WC, it will create WC.jar and I'll just click on finish. Okay, that's it. So it has created a jar file. If you go here, there is a jar file created called WC jar, so we are good here, okay? Almost the same, Mary, almost the same. In many scenarios, the syntax will be almost the same. Just so you need to change some values, like what is the mapper class, reducer class, output key type, value type, that will change depends on your program. Now one more thing is, see I want to process a data. So my data is available, it's not there. So I have to also copy the data. Let me see where is my data, I, that uh, fruits file, right? That is something I need to actually copy. There is a words file which is available, right? So this is what I want to copy. But if you notice here, all the words are separated by space. But in Eclipse, uh, the program that we have written, let us check, sorry. Yeah, the program we have written, it basically contains the code which separates the word based on the comma. Right, so I have to make it as a space. Okay, now I have to re export it as a jar and then so this is the file. Now, this file I have to copy it in SDFS, so I'll just do this Hadoop FS hyphen put words into data directory. So you got a words file, right? So your input data is available in SDFS. You have created a jar, so you are ready to execute that jar. So this is the command you will execute a jar. So Hadoop jar, WC dot jar, and you have to give the main class. You can right click on the class name and just say copy qualified name. And then you have to give two input parameters, the input file and the output path. Output path should not be present in your SDFS because it is right once read many times, okay? So this WC output directory is not there as you can see in the SDFS right now. So it will create here, okay? So I'll go ahead and execute this program. Let's see what is the output it is generating. So as you can see, see we have executed this program. So now, based on the architecture we understood last time, it is actually creating a new job ID, right? So on whenever client submits a job to job tracker, it gets a new job ID. 
So it is getting that. Now it will show you the status of map and reduce percentage. Yeah, we shall I'll see, show you all these things, right? We'll go step by step. I'll definitely show you how to see the logs, how to troubleshoot your programs, how to debug your programs, right? We'll see that. This is the first program we are executing. We'll see a lot of programs there. So definitely we'll see all these concepts. So as you can see, it is actually running it as a MapReduce mode. So as you can see, the map is 100% done. Now reducer will start. Okay, so as you can see the output is generated, I mean the map reduce is completed 100%, it says job completed successfully, so let us see the output. So you can check here, there should be a WC out folder created, under that two files will be created, underscore success means it's a success uh, full execution and part r00 this is a default file which is being created by the map british program it's output of a reducer and this file will contain your output so we need to go inside this directory and read the contents of the file
So as you can see, we got all the words and the count of the words. This is your final output which we wanted to generate. Okay. So that's how we can write and execute a MapReduce program to solve some problems. Is that clear with everyone? Any doubts anybody has on this? <coughs> I'll show you where the logs are generated, everything. After the break, uh, we can take a break now. But before the break, I just wanted to make sure everyone is clear. Any doubts anyone has? All right, so looks like everyone is clear. So let's uh, take a break now. We can come back after the break and then we'll continue further. Yes, Raj, this is an SDFS path. This is how you view the file of SDFS, right? As we have done in the earlier session also. So this is a definitely an SDFS path. All right, so let's take a break now. We'll come back after the break and continue further. Is that fine with everyone? Okay, so see you all after the break.
Are we all back? Just give me one minute.
Hello, am I audible? Okay, uh, so let us see the log files first, uh, Vishal. Uh, I think this was your question, right? So let's see the logs about this uh, map notice that we have executed. So you need to click on this Hadoop uh, SDFS name node. Once you go there, click on the utility section and go to the browse file system. If you click on the browse the file system, then there will be some uh, data directory inside that you can actually uh, not here sorry i'm sorry we need to go to the different page uh, it's a resource manager page you need to go to the hadoop yarn resource manager As you can see, our MapReduce program that we have written, we have given the name as My First MapReduce program. So here you can see there is a My First MapReduce program we have already created, right? So that is the whole idea of giving a name to the MapReduce job so that you can always identify it and check the logs about that job. So we need to go to the history. And if you click on that history, you can see that this is the job which was created by this user. This is the queue. What is the status of this job? When did it submit? When did it start? When did it end? Finished? What is the average uh, time to execute the job? And as you can see, it also gives you map and reduce task executions. If you click on the map, it will show you that what is the output of your map task so basically if you click on the map task id it will show you the map task attempt remember we understand yesterday's architecture that uh, it will attempt every task for three times if there is any failure so this is called attempt id so in first attempt only it was successful it also shows you that this attempt was made in which machine so this map task was executed in which data or machine and there is a log section. So if you click on the log section, you will be able to see the log files uh, available here. So you can see standard error. There is no error here. Standard output will come here. And the syslog, all the system generated logs will present here. So if you write any statements in your, in your Java program, it will come in this standard out section. OK? So what we will do is let me write some uh, debug statements and we'll see if we, it can be coming here in the mapper or reducer log. So I'll just say system.out.println uh, map key Okay, I'm just printing each key and value when you're iterating through this for loop. Same in the reducer also, let's say I want to write the key value. Reducer key and the reducer value. This statement should be printed in this logs. So let me create recreate a jar file out of it and then see if it this message this statement will get printed there or not so 
So I'll just re-execute re this program. Uh, no, Mary, we have to see through the SDFS Mozilla only. So here, I mean, of course, you can type the URL like this. I mean, you, if you want to check it here, you need to use a links browser in the, in the this is the browser link, right, where your, your application level uh, logs are there. So you know links, links is a browser, it's a command line browser. So through command line, if you want to check, you can use links but provided link should be installed, okay? All right, so here, uh, let us go to this uh, new job ID is what, underscore zero zero five. I think that is the job ID which we have just done, yes. So we'll click on the history and uh, we'll see the output logs it's basically you know map if you click on that it will show you the map task id and the log files for the map task so as you can see now all the, the values are printed like this map output key value everything right for every word and value one i'm printing this statement so which has come under the standard out section this is the logs which will present here. So if you want to write your own debug statement, it will come here, okay? And there are some system logs which are generated here. Same way, let us go to the reducer and check. So if you click on the reducer, then we reduce task ID. And if you click on the logs, you can also check the, get the reducer logs, like this is the, Reduce key and the total value, total sum. So is that clear with everyone? How to see the logs, how to write logs in the log files of MapReduce? You can also use the tools like log4j to write it into the separate file. Uh, 
so we still we don't have links browser installed in the terminal otherwise i would have shown that but links browser is a separate browser which we need to install so that, so that is why i said that if you have that you just say link space this url automatically it will take you to that browser right now if i do links it will say command not found so it is not yet installed in this okay but in production cluster people don't really have ui so if they want to see the logs they install links and then they use this url to basically see the logs so it's a it's a browser it's a command line browser basically no no they are in hdfs they are not stored in physically in somewhere you have to access hdfs only All right, so we will be basically now seeing the combiner. It's one of the more, one, it's uh, one more functionality that we want to see, which is how to use a combiner in MapReduce and what is the use of combiner, by the way. So if you see here, uh, till this point, for example, let me draw back uh, your attention to the uh, earlier flow that we have discussed for word count. Take the same example and see uh, if you if you notice this is output generated by all the mappers and they'll be sent to the uh, shuffle and short. But if you see here, if there are let's say so many keys which are there, which are one million keys, okay, which is generated by every mapper's output. Then, if you want to combine all the values of the same key, which is more than 1 million, so what happens here, you are transferring that much amount of data over a network, right, to the shuffle and sort phase. You are transferring almost 1 million uh, key data over a network to the shuffle and sort phase. So basically, in that case, what happens? In that case, it's actually kind of, uh, uh, I mean, when you are transferring that kind of data over a network, Basically, it will occupy a lot of network bandwidth, right? So there are so much data transfer that happens and it is occupying so much data, right? So, so much network bandwidth, basically. 
So that is also not a good idea because if it occupies a lot of network bandwidth, that will also slow down the performance. So is there a better way? Where I can actually, you know, uh, before sending it to the shuffle and sort, I can do something and I can actually try to, you know, optimize it in such a way that I have to transfer less number of data to the shuffle and sort over a network. So there is a way which is called combiner through which you can reduce number of data which is transferred over a network from each mapper. How do you use it? So basically, I'll, I'll just tell you that for example, If you just see here, this is like a little change in the earlier flow. See, I have this data which is generated as a output from mapper 1, this is output from mapper 2, this is output from mapper 3. Now, can I do something like this? See here, there may be orange comma 1 multiple times coming. Here also orange comma 1 comes 2 times. Here also it comes 2 times. I want to combine all the values of oranges, right? But then, if I transfer so many times orange comma one over a network, instead of that, can I just locally only, you know, add up all the values of the orange and take the sum, something like this, orange comma four. Here also I'll make it orange comma two, and here also I'll make it orange comma two. And then these data, I will transfer it over a network, right? So basically, if you can observe, instead of transferring all the orange comma ones, if there are four orange comma one here, that means four times I have to transfer orange comma one over a network. Instead of that, if I can aggregate it, sum it up, then I just have to transfer once orange comma four. Similarly, for map two and map three output as well. So it will certainly reduce the network traffic and network bandwidth which is occupied by basically, you know, uh, transferring data by, by basically summing up all the values of the same key at the local mapper level only. This is again a local output generated after this processing, okay? So this is how you can reduce number of data which is being transferred over a network. But how do you achieve that? How do you actually take the sum of all the keys and achieve that result? For that, you have to use a reducer Okay, so how do we achieve that? So we are basically going to apply the reducer code. See, in reducer what we are doing? We are iterating through all the values of the same key and then again we are adding up, and we are summing up. So the same reducer code, if you are applying it locally to the local output of every mapper, right? All this output data which is generated, what if I'll apply this reducer code here itself locally to this machine? and try to get the sum of all the well, all the keys here itself, right? Then definitely I will save a lot of network data transfer. So that is what is going to happen. You are applying the same reducer code to the local, uh, uh, to, the out, to the output generated by mappers uh, at a local level. So that is called combiner. Combiner is nothing but you are applying the same reducer function as the output of a mapper all right All right, everyone, so it looks like uh, 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 we just got an information from Simply Hunting that there is a Simply Talk uh, community which was started and uh, we encourage all of you to participate in that community. 
it's basically one place where you can join you can ask questions experts will come and answer that questions you can get answers from anyone you can also answer someone's questions so it's a more like interactive community for a particular topic so you can actually join for big data or anything right so you just join search about that it's just like one community you can be part of any community and then start uh, learning from there also it's more like interactive learning and another thing which I wanted to recommend is uh, please feel uh, please take the survey at the end of this session. Uh, whenever you your session is complete, I'm sure you would have been presented with some feedback page. So it will just take two minutes of your time, but please do that every day so that you know it will get people's it will get that uh, 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 kind of information to all the people, all the Simply Learn team as well. I mean, basically it helps us. Uh, design the courses accordingly. So you can uh, always take the uh, feedback page at the end. Elia Raja, URL for Simply Talk. Uh, I think you would have received a separate mail uh, from the Simply Learn team itself. Okay. So there it will have all the details about how to join that. Okay, let's get back to the reducer which we are talking about. So reducer is nothing but it's a, it's a, I mean, so sorry, combiner is the code which is nothing but a reducer code only, but we are applying it at a local level of every mapper. Instead of writing, uh, applying it in the final data, you are applying it at a local level of every mapper. And that's how we are basically converting the data. We are adding uh, uh, where some, we are taking some of the keys in the local level of mapper itself so that we can reduce the network transfer in shuffle and sort phase. Again, see, this is how it will be combined, right? Now every key value will go as an input to the reducer in this fashion, right? So every key and a list of value will go as an input to reducer, and again reducer will iterate through this list of values, and then it will basically take the sum. So that sum which you are getting, the final output as you can see, will be the same output even if you have not used a combiner, right? So the most important point to notice about combiner is if you are using a combiner, you have to make sure as a developer that your final output is not going to change. If your final output is going to change, then you can't use a combiner, okay? What could be the scenario where your final output can change? So let me give you that scenario. A simple scenario would be, let's say taking the average of number. For example, let's say uh, I get some number like this, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. This is the output of map 1. This is the output of, let's say, map 2. And you want to take the average in reducer, okay? After shuffle and sort of zoom, the data comes and you have to take the average. So, this is 180 and this is 100, 280 by 7, which is Total sum is 280 by 7, which gives you 40, right? If I have applied this reducer code, which is to take an average at every local mapper level, then it should take the average on these four numbers, which is like 100 by 4 is 25, and this is like 180 by 3 is 60. Now you have 85 by 2 and what value you will get 42.5 so these two values are not equal as you can see right so that is why if you are applying a reducer as a combiner you need to make sure that your final output is not going to change 
because of this average example where we tried applying a reducer as a combiner it actually changed the final output then in that case you should not use a combiner at all right only where only the cases where your you know final output is not going to change then we can use a combiner uh, uh, and we can reduce the network traffic and we can improve the performance so are we all clear with why combiner how to do combiner and all that Okay, Mary, I'll, I will repeat it again. See, what you need to do is, basically the problem statement is, if I have one million keys, which is being generated as an output from different, different mapper tasks, then I have to transfer all these keys values to the shuffle and sort, right, where it gets combined. Now, if you have 1 million keys from all the mappers, then there are too many data which basically you are, uh, okay, okay. You got all these points, fine, fair enough. So then I don't need to repeat, thanks uh, for saving my effort. So let me then explain you the average part. So that is just one example that I have taken. What I told is, let's say these are the output which are, that, let's say these are some, data which is generated as an output by mapper one and this is uh, some data which is generated as an output for mapper two right now the problem statement is you want to get the average of all the numbers right so in reducer you can write the logic of average what is an average total sum of all the numbers divided by total number of numbers total number yeah so basically if you see here if you take the sum of all this you will get the sum as 280 and the total numbers are how many seven right so what is the final average you will get 40 that is basically if you don't apply a combiner right and if you do average only at the reducer end but what if I will use this reducer code at a local level of mapper when I start applying this reducer code at the local level of the mapper, then what happens? So in that case, basically, you are trying to take the average. So it's like this. You are trying to take the average of all these local numbers. So it will be like these four numbers, if you take the sum, is 100. 100 divided by 4 is 25. All right. Similarly, here it is 180 divided by 3 which is 60 so this is your average now again these two numbers will be transferred to the reducer where again it is going to take the average so it is total sum is 85 divided by 2 right which gives you the average as 42.5 so of course 42.5 is not equal to 40 so what I'm trying to highlight a point is in this particular example where we want to find out the average of all the numbers the combiner cannot be used because it is going to change your final output so you as a developer need to make sure when you are using combiner that means when you are using a reducer code at the local level of mapper it is not going to change the final output if your final output is not going to be impacted then we are good we can use a combiner and save some uh, network traffic is that clear Mary Yes, any more doubts anybody has on the combiner topic? I'll explain you how to implement that and I'll execute that program also, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that everyone is clear with the concept.
okay great so let us now start implementing it let us see the implementation by the way before i implement i just want you to look at the earlier execution that we have had for word count program okay you could see here that i have executed this program and it has given us the uh, uh, certain details here in the logs right these things are called counters and we will also see the example of how to write the counters uh, in later sessions but i just wanted to tell you this option which is like you know reduce shuffle bytes so this property will tell you that how many data has been transferred over a network to shuffle and sort phase from the mapper right this is called reduce shuffle byte this will say that this many data will be was transferred over a network to the shuffle and sort phase right so 2881 bytes are transferred that's what it is saying now if you use combiner our final our our goal is to reduce this number so if you use combiner this number will be reduced along with that if you also see the other properties like combine input and output records it is zero right now right but if you use a combiner it should basically have some values here all right so our goal is to reduce the particular number so let us try to use a combiner in our code it's a very very lengthy program you have to write lot of pro, lot of effort you need to put to enable a combiner okay so let's start writing that code please don't get worried we will write too many lines of code to enable a combiner that's it done our combiner is enabled that is the hard work we need to do to enable a combiner in our mapreduce program okay so it's very simple it's very easy to implement it just that whatever is your reducer class that is the one which you are setting it as a combiner so now framework will uh, uh thanks everyone so it's important right sometimes we should also make some fun so that people don't get bored okay uh yeah i was just mentioning that it's basically about making sure that you let hadoop know that this is the function or this is the code i am i want you to execute it during the combiner phase now with that hadoop knows that okay fine this developer wants me to execute this particular program is a combiner so let me do that now how, when to use that where he, all the mapper tasks it goes and execute it creates a separate file everything is internal to hadoop developer does not need to take any pain here right so that's all that's how we enable a combiner now we'll execute this program and see whether we, we were able to reduce that property number or not now another interesting point that if you would have noticed by now is see this is a map reduce program that we have written do you see anywhere we have coded every anything like you know client server communication or or connect to one particular ip address open a socket anything such any such things right see we have just written two different components like what to do when mapper phase gets executed what to do when reducer phase gets executed and of course some basic configuration in driver so you can think like how beautifully a mapreduce framework has been designed so that developer's job is reduced very very heavily right he just need to supply business logic he doesn't need to worry about all the cross cutting functions that he needs to take care that is the whole idea of using a map reduce so map reduce framework has been designed with a uh, with this kind of objective that developers should just do what is expected out of them they should not take care of any other stuff it, it should be completely black box for them whether there are 100 machines running in the cluster or whether there, there are two machines running in the cluster and which machine is up which machine is down which way, which is failed developer does not need to care about anything like that he just supply a map reduce program and it is the job of framework to execute it in a distributed way and then give you the result right so that's the beauty of map reduce so anyway let's export it as a jar and see the output uh 
uh, here remember the property we, we have actually given the reduce uh, shuffle bytes as 2881 now let me run the program in a separate window Now what happens if you give the older output directory which is already present in the SDFS? We discussed that, right? If you go to the SDFS, yes, that's right, uh, error. I'm sorry, that's right, Michelle, so error comes. So if you go to the uh, uh, SDFS, WC out one is a directory, let's say. It is already present or WC out is already uh, also already present. If I give the same path, let me show you what happens. Uh, just for your understanding, I'm showing you that execution. So as you can see, it gives you an error saying that file already exists. That means output directory already present in the uh, SDFS already exists. So that is what we mean by write once, read many times. So Hadoop framework will always check whether the output path exists or not. And based on that only, it will allow you to execute the job further. So you have to give a new name only, a new output directory only. Now it is going to execute successfully. Uh, no, Raj, because that's what we say, right? Write once, read many times. So it doesn't allow you to overwrite it. For the performance reasons, they have followed that pattern. Write once, read many times. Okay, so this program has been completed. Now, if you see here, there is a property called reduce shuffle bytes. Earlier window, if you open, the reduce shuffle byte was 2881, right? Now, with combiner, the reduce shuffle byte becomes 82 only. So that's the difference you are getting by using a combiner. That's the amount of time or amount of uh, record that you are, basically amount of traffic that you save by transferring less number of bytes over a network. And it also says that this many records I have processed via combiner. Combined input and output record is this much. Earlier case, there was no combiner running, so it was zero. Okay. The final output, if you open, it will be the same. So there is no difference in the final output. If you just... If you 
see the final output, it will be the still the same actually. It contains all the uh, values of the all the counts of this uh, different different words. There is no change in the final output, but we are saving a lot of network traffic. So that's the whole idea of using a combiner. It's a small concept, but very very useful and handy concept. So many times when you write MapReduce program, you should also think whether you can use a combiner there or not to improve the performance. So is everyone clear with this concept? Any any questions on the combiner? Okay, meanwhile, uh, you can ask questions. I think we need to open the poll also. So can you please fill up the poll? Uh, meanwhile, please ask questions if you have any. Yes, yes, Mary, of course. I'll share it by the end of uh, this session itself. I'll share all the code and I'll share the input data as well with all of you, okay? And you can practice it during the weekend and then next session onwards, we will write more complex MapReduce programs. We'll also see some, uh, you know, advanced concepts in MapReduce. So it'll be more interesting. You will actually learn how to process different types of data, how to you know use different concepts like partitioner, map side join, reduce side join, how do you use custom data type, all this stuff we will cover as examples, okay? So it will actually really give you a very good thorough knowledge on your uh, 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 MapReduce fundamentals. I'm not sure, Mary, whether I got your email ID or not. I hope you would have sent it. If you're not, whoever has not sent me the email, uh, please send it in this email ID. Whoever has sent it and whoever has received that Hadoop installation guide, please don't send it again. Okay, so if you have not received it, then only please share it. I could still see that uh, there are two people who have not done the polling, so can you please finish it? That means, Mary, I did not receive it. Can you again try to give me the test mail, please? I will, I will, uh, you know, so that I'll include you, so that all these programs that I have to share, I will share it to you also. Okay, if you have sent it just now, then I will, I will have your email ID, so I will uh, include you, okay? All right, cool everyone. So as we as we said, uh, please also take the feedback survey at the end of the session. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that's all we had for today's session. If you don't have any questions, we can actually call it a day. And by the way, uh, one thing people who are uh, you know, uh, joining from India or even from US, uh, mostly I think Indian people would know that there is a festival going on. So everyone, happy Dashera, uh, and have a great weekend ahead. So we'll be meeting after two days after the weekends, and we'll be meeting on Monday morning India time, which may be Sunday evening US time. So thank you everyone and uh, have a great weekend ahead.
थैंक यू गुड बाय